video games Whoa. are for nerds. Aww. But that doesn't mean we can't talk about them. That's why you're listening to The Week in Gaming, the only gaming podcast that breaks down the last seven days and tears games apart from the inside. Ugh. So forget your worries, open your ears, and join Simon Miller and a co-host for the entertainment chatter you need. Also, screw Dark Souls. Hello, my name is Simon Miller and welcome to a very special and potentially unexpected episode of The Week in Gaming, but some context if you are a brand new listener. I am very privileged and very lucky to be able to do all of this content thanks to patreon.com forward slash Simon316. And if you do head over there now, you can sign up and you can come and join me on one of these podcasts. You can be on this podcast, you can be on the wrestling podcast, you can be on any podcast you want. Sounds like I've used the start of my podcast to do marketing. I haven't, but I like everyone to feel inclusive and to know what's going on. You'd be like, Millie, it's not a Monday. What are you doing it? So I'm letting you know. Now you know. Now you've got all the explanation. And it's also where this is kind of cool too, because not only am I going to welcome my man Chris, but technically I'm going to welcome my man Chris back because he's been on before. I love that. Circle of life. How you doing, dude? I am not too bad at all. Yourself? Yeah, I'm all right. I'm all right. Well, that's a half truth. I was a bit late getting to our call today because you know how it is. My car's in a garage and they're pretending they're finding things that aren't true. So then you have to row with them and you're like, blah, blah, blah. Boring, boring, boring. But it's all sorted out now, which is the main thing. Um, But yeah, otherwise, let's talk about games. Let's do it. Let's not even muck around anymore. Now, it's going to be, obviously, you know, if you listen to The Week in Gaming on a Monday, that kind of sort of, this one kind of goes against what the title of the podcast is. It's not going to be The Week in Gaming because... We've only, we only did a podcast a few days ago, so that would be nuts. However, what we are going to do is we can talk about more some specific stuff, some more personal stuff, starting with something I'm actually quite interested in, because I could never get into it. You've been playing the Division 2, correct? I have, yeah. Right. I've got the beta this morning. Yeah, so tell me, because the thing with the Division was, I love the, going back to the original one, I love the concept. And I love the concept to such a degree, I decided... I'm actually going to get involved with this. It's, it's not, in that kind of sort of model isn't usually my thing. And I played, I think, I swear I played it with video game of people. That's maybe, uh, either way, I was still, I was still, you know, I- that part of my life. And while I thought it was okay, the thing that I felt like it really lacked, and I think this could be just, you know, uh, uh, it's probably the same with Destiny too. It just felt like, it didn't feel empty. It felt very packed, but there was no dangling carrot. Do you know what I mean? Like the best thing I love about those kinds of games is you get to a certain point and it will shift gears a little bit. Basically the standard, you know, drip dropping of missions here and there. When I sit down to play... The division, I was like, I don't know where I'm going. I know this is really cool sort of overarching narrative that I can get invested in, but it never really feels like I'm a part of it. It almost feels like it's happening around me. But you tell me, man, you've played them you you've played it, man. So is it better? Is it worse? Is it the same? It's pretty much the same to be honest. <laughs> I knew it, I knew it. I knew that's what you're gonna say. Yeah, they they just sort of obviously yeah, they did well enough with the first one. Um that they it seems like they've just gone it's just do more of the same thing, but bigger. Like you start off in the first place you are is on the White House lawn. So you're like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> Heading towards the light, um, the the White House, and then it all just kicks off from there. There's no Donald Trump; he's missing. Um, <laughs> of course, he <it> is. <laughs> he's gone off. He's like, no, I'm hamburgers. I'm going somewhere else. Um, yeah, you've got a few extra little bits and pieces in there. Um, they've changed the skills slightly. It's more confusing than the first one as well. The menus I sort of sat there and they just give me a headache. Oh, so I just man. went, I'm leaving that alone. I <laughs> just played the game and the game's perfectly fine. It's a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, it, it just seems a bit more complicated. They, they've tried to add more things into it. Do you think that, because like the first one I feel like was an attempt to try and bring as many people in. Do you think now they kind of just double down? We know what our audience is. So we're going to cater to them first and foremost because, you know, difficult menus. I mean, I've been playing games for, you know, 20 plus years, but the last thing I ever want is a difficult menu. In fact, I hate that. So it seems crazy they, they, they'd want to add that in as well. I don't know. That, that, that seems like a backward step. Yeah, I think what they do is because they've made like the messing around the guns sort of more in depth and messing around with your skills. Um, it seems to be more like in the original one, you leveled up and then your skills leveled up. But now it seems you have a choice at the very beginning. And it tried to show me in the tutorial, but I was like, well, I tried to read it and then just went X, 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 X. I don't care. <laughs> I can't be bothered to read the reams of text to tell me how to do this. And then I ended up with the wrong kind of drone, um, like a machine gun thing that I didn't really want as well. But yeah, I mean, I suppose. I'm hoping that, you know, because it's the beta, that they're 
somebody's going to be telling them, right, this is shit, you need to change that. And then when the, the full game comes out, it'll be a little bit more streamlined. What's the concept here? Because the first one was like, oh, what the hell was it? I can't. What was? It? I can't even remember now. But forget about that. What's the What's the concept of this one? Like, what's the idea? Why Why are we doing these things that we're doing? Uh, if it's a continuation of like the original. All oh, right. Okay. So it's the same kind of stuff. Was a uh, yeah. Some guy uh, infected money with smallpox. I That's think it was. what it was. Yeah, I knew it was something daft. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and it's just a continuation of that. They've added a whole like, new faction of people who are slightly better um, equipped. Then you just had like the like, the thugs in the street of um, was it New York? I think it was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, these are like proper militia people now as well. So they've got big machine guns, and they're you can tell they're they're much more clever compared to. So the AI's gone up a bit as well because they will run around the back of you, um, they flank and this sort of stuff. And this was right at the beginning as well. So I sort of run in as like. Whoa, 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 back up, back up again. And sort of, you, know, you have to be a bit more strategic. So I'm assuming, um, you know, this is just the grunts. This is it's going to you know, be more strategic. So, um, yeah, story-wise, as far as I know, it's just a continuation. Uh, Washington fell as well, so you got to go and fix that. I think those games to me, I was, just, I was just sat here trying to consider if I meant this, and I think that I do... I think they just got to be played with friends, right? I think they're, you know, as opposed to being a game I actually want to sit down and play, I think I see them more as like a hub to get in contact with my mates and say, look, let's sit down, we'll have a chat, and we'll just happen to play the division as we as we kind of, you know, go through whatever. That's kind of how I see it. It's like, you know, when you used to invite people around and you used to play on your sofa together. Now I kind of see it as, well, let's just, we'll just do it online, but we, you know, the division can create that backdrop as we play. Yeah, um, I, I did that a lot with my friend Stuart with the other Tom Clancy gamer, Ghost Recon. Yeah. Playing that on my own is, is boring as hell, but you get a mate involved. <laughs> it's, it's brilliant. No, I totally well, agree. They're running each other over by accident. You tell him it was by accident, but you're sitting there going, <laughs> bang. <laughs> so oh, man. They, they, they've added as well that the multiplayer side of things in the original division, um, you didn't really hear from anyone until you went to a mission and then you could add people but it's constantly saying um oh what's the agent in trouble or something like that and you can just hold this one of the buttons down and then you just join them so now the multiplayer side of things is much more expanded so that's quite good yeah no like i said i don't i don't hate the division i just much like it to me it's like destiny i just I'm all a bit meh to it. I know some people love it and they're absolutely, you know, they're desperate for the, for the Division 2 and, and good for them. Like, it's certainly nothing against them. But yeah, it, it, it just doesn't, I guess just the way that my sort of day-to-day goes and trying to free up the time to play something like that because I just don't have it. I, I really do want stripped back experiences these days. And I guess that's, that's where it comes into me. Like, I love the fact that developers are pushing more and more and more. But there isn't one out there that's kind of going the other way. And that's kind of what mm. I want now. I want, I, I want someone to go, you know what, let's go back to streamlined experiences. And I'd be like, yeah, let's do that. I think that's why God of War spoke to me too much. Like, it certainly wasn't that. But it was far more, it, it was like a semi-open world as opposed to a proper open world. And again, if you wanted to be super focused with it, you could. And I, I really like that. It felt really refreshing in a, in a day where, and again, it makes perfect sense when a developer wants to make use of all the tools at their disposal. You know, you, you wouldn't be able to have done a game like this five, ten years ago, uh, ten years ago, mm. I'd say. And look, they're, they're, they're huge. And they make, they make, you know, Ubisoft wouldn't be making a sequel if the first one didn't have some kind of audience. No, definitely not. Um, yeah, you have like the, I mean, the drop in, drop out, the, the big daddy, and that was Doom, isn't it? That's the one. You, you can go in, play it for a little while, drop out again. Leave it, come back, still sitting there waiting for you. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I'm all about that these days. And that's why I kind of started playing more indie games as well. Because indie games, mostly because of their restricted budget, feel like this is what we've got to do. So they kind of just, yeah, they, they, then they do that. But I'm intrigued. I mean, I'm, I'm intrigued to see to see what they do. I know I have a big audience. I know people will complain and moan every time they make <laughs> they make changes to the, to the base game because that's just what happens. <laughs> and when, uh, when does it actually come out? For real, I don't actually know the Division Two release date. March something. March, March, day, March the fifteenth. Yeah, you're right. Okay, mm. so they still got they still got a month or so before it comes out, and then I guess this is just to sort of eradicate any bugs and then move from there. But you're still going to play the main one when it comes out. It hasn't put you off or anything like that. Oh no, um, I might actually pre-order it, which nice. is something mm. I, I don't do. <laughs> It, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's about 600 versions of it as well. Though, but which is you literally took the words out of my mouth. Is it like an anthem <laughs> situation where you have to go through a spreadsheet 
to try yeah. and figure out what version. What is that about, man? What has happened there? I don't know. I have no idea. Like, I don't. Um, mi- I don't mind microtransactions when they're done well and they offer mm-hmm. like you know fair. Uh, a fair consumer choice, but when you have to sit there and try and work through twenty-two thousand different SKUs, I'm like, what are we doing? This is yeah. ridiculous. I'm too old. I'm too old for that. Yeah. Just, I just want to play the game. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. Like, I went to play Spider-Man the other day and I had to update. I was like, man, I miss my SNES. My SNES <laughs> I've had to update. I'm sick of updating. Like, it's true. You take a week off playing games, and your first day back is just update your PlayStation Four, update the video game, update this, update. Your... I had to update my TV. I'm like, <laughs> what, what is going on? I just want to play. Um, talking about games that are kind of a bit more recent, or I mean, very recent. It's only been out a couple of days. We were discussing it on Monday. Uh, yeah, you know, the Titanfall dev came out with Apex Legends, which is a battle royale game, which is free to play. Again, same model as Fortnite. Why wouldn't it be? Massive success Fortnite, as we all know. I have downloaded it, and I want to play it because I've heard good things, and I like the Titanfall guys. I really do. I think Respawn are great. You've been playing it, though, and you also very interestingly said to me that it's a battle royale game you can actually stomach. So that's the big thing I want to I want to learn because I haven't really I mean I haven't really gone out of my way to look at it to be fair. But when you take in stuff like Blackout or obviously Fortnite or PUBG, what does this do differently other than I assume being in first person in terms of the actual core mechanics? What does it do differently to kind of steal away people that are playing battle royale stuff because that's the hard thing, isn't it? You've got you, you've got choice now. It's becoming a proper genre. So what does this do that other ones don't do? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, um, yeah. I mean, I played Fortnite a few times, and I mean, you know, I'm not going to crap on it. It's, it works. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. perfectly fine. PUBG again, played that a few times. It works perfectly fine. But I just never could never get into them. But when sort of you you jet in on um, in Apex, um, sort of flying with Iron Man boots. <laughs> That's what it looks like. And that like, you work in a, a tight knit group of three. And there's other, there's like twenty other groups of three somewhere on the island as well, and it forces you to work with the other people, and it's got like that uh, the Overwatch um, thing as well with the hero classes, so you can have like a healer, um, the tank, that sort of thing, mm-hmm. all together. So it takes away like the the, the randomness, and I've never like in um, F- PUBG. I remember I walked once across a field and suddenly just died because somebody thousands of miles away shot me with a sniper rifle. I was like, oh, good. <laughs> I'm the first casualty and I'll just back to the lobby, start again. Doesn't hasn't happened to me yet in this game. I just feel more in control. It's a lot more fun. And there's loads of cool things as well, like zip wires and um, launching yourself up into the air and carrying on flying. And The guns are great and the loot's great and it just just feels good it feels like a, it feels fun does it i mean is it 100 players and all of that because the only reason i ask that is because obviously red dead's got a battle royale mode but that only does 15 players is this like a more uh, one akin to fortnite so it's 100 versus each other and all of that uh, there's 60 um, 60 they're, right okay they're all in groups of three and i think there's like 20 squads i think that's the maths for all oh, right so you, you, you team up every game there's not a choice not to team up no, it's just the, the three of you all the time. Um, uh, okay, so th- yeah, that does that does make it more interesting. And that's, actually, th- this makes sense as well because there's some kind of communication system in the game that's amazing, right? Oh, the pointing. Yeah, that's really really simple. You just double uh, double tap R one, and you point at, at something, and it'll it'll say um, that that's an enemy or it's a weapon or you know, whatever's you've pointed at. It'll shout to the rest of the team. So if you see something. You can sort of go, oh, oh, I'll see that. And then everybody sees it. And if it is a person, they end up going like a red colour. Um, and there's a character who can actually do that as a skill, but he shows everybody on the map. Wow, all right. So this is a bit, so it's a bit more, again, the, the well, either the best thing or the worst thing, depending how you look at it or Fortnite, is it is really stripped back, isn't it? Everyone is, there's no classes. You know, you're all the same person. This sounds like there's classes and stuff, right? Yeah, there's uh, eight, I think. Eight? Uh, Oh my, I don't know anything about this video game. So what kind of stuff do they offer? He's got one guy that lets you see all the enemies on the map. What else? What are the other special abilities? Uh, There's a healing robot. Um, You've got your tank class. You've got one who's a bit like Tracer with the zipping about, uh, teleporting and stuff. Uh, Your sniper class. Um, And there's others, but I can't can't remember what they do, to be honest with you. They kill you a lot. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but basically, it's a way to. I think that makes sense because if you're in a team, 
that may not necessarily work if you're doing, you know, one on one on one on one on one. But if you've got three teams of 20, then yeah, that, that, that makes perfect sense because each team, you're basically, you've got an extra spin there where you want to try to balance out your team, right? That's what it's about. So I'm going to focus on this. You focus on that. I think that's really clever. How big is the map as well? Because obviously the thing about what I found when I first played Fortnite, I never played PUBG, same with Blackout. I was always amazed how big the map was. I mean, it makes sense when you know you've got that many people running around. But is it, I mean, does it have the same kind of features of Fortnite in the sense that Fortnite is very iconic? You know, when you go to each of its individuals' uh, sort of locations, like Tomato Town, it does have, dare I say it, personality and everything like that. Yeah, this has got the same thing. Um, they're like little sectors and they have different names. Um, and each one as well tells you. Uh, the kind of loot that will be there. So you've got like, um, there's like a Colosseum thing go there. When you land, it tells you the loot's uncommon or common or rare. So you know what you'll be finding in those areas. Um, people are very quickly learning exactly where they should be going, which is making it interesting because now other people are going, well, I'm going there because everyone's going to be there. So I'm going to go all the way over there as far away from everyone. And then so like strategies are forming already, which is quite clever as well. That's interesting. Everyone is raving about it, which has got me... I, mean, I will play it, because I've played all those Battle Royale games, and I just... Like I say, I want to like Fortnite, but I'm just not good at it. I guess, actually, that's something we should talk about. How hard is it? Because that's, that, that's what drives me absolutely nuts, is that I try and play Fortnite, and you're like, man, it's just too hard. I know it makes me sound like an idiot, but, you know, it just it oh, is. No, no. It's just really <laughs> I hard. I know exactly how you feel. Yeah, you, you get killed so quick. Um, it, it depends on the, the makeup of of the group like if there's three healers then you can sort of you know daisy chain heal each other um or you know you could end up with i mean i've, I've had it where it's just been people i've never met before and they all seem to go as the same like the tracer raven whatever her name is they all go as her and i always go as the robot so i'm just healing them um and trying to keep them as live as pos- long as i can and they seem to be um heavy dps type characters you know they zip in stand on top of the person, kill them, zip back out again, and then I heal them for whatever damage. It seems to be working. Um, but yeah, it depends on the on the makeup of the group. But I suppose if you've got yourself and two friends and you're actually thinking about what you're doing, you'd probably find it a lot easier than somebody who's just you know, drop in, drop out. Interesting. So it kind of does negate a lot of my, I wouldn't say issues, that's going a bit much, but it does negate a lot of my yeah, you know, worries that I had about, well, yeah, I mean, the problem I had with Fortnite is, is that, you know, some games don't even last more than two seconds. Mm. So, you know, I, I land, I get killed, I land, I get killed. And after a half, you know, five, ten minutes, I don't want to do this anymore. This is no fun for me. <laughs> so you kind of just want to stop. So, you know, if it does bring in teams and there's a, there's a bigger aspect of playing with your mates, I know you can do that in Fortnite too, but it just it just never worked for me. That is absolutely something that, I'll be intrigued about. I still think it's crazy that EA has released this now when we've got Firestorm, whatever the Battlefield one is coming out. But, you know, I guess... Yeah, they're a weird bunch, EA. They just don't seem to care anymore. Well, no, it, it just, I'm not going to say they're cannibalizing their own business model. I mean, that's a bit extreme. They're certainly not doing that. But I do find it... I find it crazy that you would... I'm not saying you're risking anything, but you do run the risk of just negating your audience. I mean, you, you could probably argue that, well, no, that's not the case at all because, you know, they, they have different groups. But I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I just, it just <laughs> seems, it just seems crazy to me. But who knows, right? Who knows? We'll find out. Yeah, I think the Battlefield thing would be very different to um, Apex as well because Battlefield is going to be more based around war, like, you know, real war for real men whereas apex is more about um fantasy diddling with your friends are you still gonna play is you still you know you don't have any time to stop playing or anything like that um i, I probably i like i haven't got battlefield five was it five is it called five or i don't know what they call it uh, I whatever i don't know that. wherever this one is yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah i didn't bother with it um I've got Battlefront 2 instead. I'm waiting for the Battle Royale to turn up in that, which it will do eventually. Um, just because, imagine Battle Royale with Star Wars characters. That that I would. Why haven't they done that? 
That would be amazing. Because I feel like they absolutely boned uh, Battlefront. <laughs> now, <laughs> and now they're trying to distance themselves from it as much as possible. Don't get me wrong. Like, I, I, I think there is a lot of good to that game. But really, everything around it was a bit like, yeah, this isn't... This isn't the best, is it? You kind of you kind of made this impossible to play in many ways. Yeah, I still enjoy it. I've, I've, I've uh, been uh, a fan of that thing. Like yeah. I, I think you know, like you say, it's there's something good about it just because of the way that it focuses on on Star Wars and the heroes mode, especially. I thought was great. I loved the heroes mode. I thought it was, I thought it was a lot of fun. But I, I got it. I understand. You know, when I sat down and you know, getting into a game on that takes forever because you do have to go through so many like, well, just boxes and menus and, and whatever as before you can mm. actually play and it does have such a a serious impact on what you can actually do i completely understand why yeah a lot of people are like oh this is this is this is not for me and and we know you know what happened happened what well, I, I don't know what the the ea contract is but we'll have to wait and, and see what they do with it but it does suck i i, we, I want good star wars games and I, yeah that would be, that would be really nice just have one good one yeah, no, but we'll see. I mean, there was rumours at one point that you know Disney were going to pull out of the EA deal, which I don't think they'd ever do because that. I mean, that is the pot calling the kettle black if Disney pulls out over question- mm. <laughs> questionable business practices. But let's not get into it. That's being unfair. What I what I don't get with with EA is they've got Bioware sat right there. The people that made Kotor, and they haven't told them, do you fancy doing another Star Wars game? I, I I think it may be Bioware saying that, you know. I think Bioware are desperate to, you know, get another another uh, sort of IP off the ground. Yeah, it could be. I could be wrong, but I just I, I think that's why they're desperate for Anthem to work. I think they're, they're, they're desperate for it. And, you know, from what I've seen of Anthem, it's all right. Yeah, it looks all right. Yeah, look, that's a problem, right? We don't want all right. We want wow. This is the greatest <laughs> thing ever. So, so it's, it's Iron Man. Basically, you can just be Iron Man. Yeah, which is a good idea on paper, mm. but it's got to be fun. It's got to be fun at the same time. So yep. everyone wants to be Iron Man. Yeah, they everyone. do. They do. <laughs> yeah, they just make an Iron Man game. To be honest. Yeah, just do that. I'd buy that. Yeah, well, I'm bad dude. I would. I'd certainly look into it. Uh, you also mentioned something about the Epic Store. In the Epic Store, again, I never thought would be a talking point, but here we are. And obviously, um, Exodus, uh, Metro Exodus has decided to go exclusive on that. Cause an absolute fora. It's still going on now. Like, Steam are still pissed off about this. I was, I'm still seeing articles and whatnot being shot across my social media feeds all the time. But you mentioned that you sort of built yourself a new PC recently. You've got into all of that. Um, again, the Epic Store's not really something I've ever toyed around with because I'm that guy. I'm a console guy. So, yeah, dude, you know, hit me up. Give me the info. Um, it's, it's very bare bones at the minute. Um, I, I don't understand why. Well, I, I can't do and don't why... Steam are, are so pissed off at Epic. Epic are just sort of sitting there, minding their own business, just picking up people because the, the business model is is better on their side. You know, the, the people that put their games on, they're going to get more money for it. Um, Epic take less than Steam do. Um, but it's not really a rival at this point, I don't think. And, yeah, that whole Metro thing as well, you know, I think that's just been blown well out of proportion you know it, to the point where the actual author of the books has had to pop up and go um, i think epic's doing fine can we just leave everyone alone and just enjoy the games yeah um which i completely agree with so you know, in the end like, from what i've noticed now that i'm using steam and i've got the good old games one as well and epics and origins as well is that once I download the game, it just ends up as a little icon on my desktop, and I just click that. It's exactly the same as years and years and years ago when I had to stick a CD in and do the same thing. So I, <laughs> I don't see I don't see why everyone's so peed off about it. If anything, you know, I'm I'm getting the better deal because you know, there's, the game might be cheaper on the Epic Store than it is on the Steam Store. It might go to the actual website for the game. It might be cheaper there. Now, either way, you know, we we're the ones getting the better better deal out of it. So, what is the problem? I think that, I think you hit the nail on the head, right? If you're the king, and then all of a sudden someone comes in and starts making a fuss, you're like, "Wait a minute, what?" You know, this wasn't happening before. And I think that's that's the main thing. I think Steam is so used to being the top dog in the yard, and now Epic had come along. And let's, you know, I don't know what Valve's revenue is, but I got to imagine they've got a lot of it. But who's got more than Epic right now? 
What if yeah, what true. if Fortnite make two hundred million dollars a month or something crazy figure like that? Like there, there's a reason, and that this is kind of why I respect it too. A, if it helps the consumer and creates a more competitive environment that way, a hundred percent. But also, it goes to show that Epic aren't just resting on their laurels; they're now investing the money they're making on Fortnite and putting it back into games. Because I presume that the Metro guys get something out of this too. You know, they're not going to remove it for sale on Steam if they think it's going to hurt their bottom line. So hopefully, all of this competition is just making it better for us, the fans, the consumer making it better for developers you know creating uh you know creating uh you know just a, a new wave of ways to play games and I, i'm I, you know it would be it, it's it's not as bad as say you know an xbox exclusive versus a, a ps4 exclusive because as long as you've got a pc you've got access to both the steam and the epic stores so there's nothing holding you back from playing it so other than if you work at valve i don't know why anybody would have a problem mm. it's all good yeah but it seems that they're trying to just turn the consumer against you know each other as well it's like oh don't go to epic they're crap and epic are going they're just uh, epic to be honest they're just sitting there going i don't really care you can come to us or you don't this is your, I, I don't your see, choice. How, isn't it weird isn't it weird because epic were the boys back in the day like um unreal tournament you know gears of war had a lot of love uh, you know all the other stuff they've done but now just because they got a successful game everyone's like ah rubbish it's like, it's like it's like a band that grows up and gets successful. Like Fortnite is not, you know, it's not trash as we talked about earlier. It's a very well put together, smart battle royale game that isn't going to be for everyone because that genre is a bit not controversial, but it, it, I guess it skews young. But it's still a well put together game. I don't understand that kind of backlash at all. I, I, I especially because if if, if you want to play it on PC, you can. There's not, nothing changes that. You just got to go sign up for the Epic Store instead. What's the difference? Yeah, I, I don't get it. I don't get it at all. I'm, as I say, I'm enjoying having so much stuff to play with, like with the, the good old games. Just downloaded System Shock, System Shock Two for oh, it's Terrif- two quid. Terrifying, absolutely terrifying. I love those games. I'm already doing System Shock Two with just the wrench on um, Expert as well. <laughs> just, it's like muscle memory. <laughs> Oh, dude, that's brilliant. That's like, it's like torture. It's like, yeah. you're just making it so hard. Oh, dude, I love stuff like that. I remember I played a bit of System Shock 2, but as we all know, I'm a big coward. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Even, I'd probably, it'd probably be better now because I imagine it's aged a little bit, so it lacks the atmosphere that it once did. But yeah, genuinely, what a brilliant, what a, what a, I mean, that, I mean, without that, you wouldn't have Bioshock, right? So, yeah. I was saying to my friend, actually, um, played like resident evil 7 and that game didn't make me jump at all how um, how within, <laughs> <laughs> within the first 10 or 15 minutes of system shock 2 i jumped five times because uh, just the fact that all the creatures are never where they're, they're supposed to be it's like i you go through a door and it's, it's usually a guy there opened the door he's not there he's behind me the bastard so I turn around and he's like, oh. <laughs> so, so do you think that's what, because I find that fascinating because I mean, I am, you know, I've always said this, if somebody wants to find out if their game is scary towards the common denominator, get me in to play your game and you'll be able to find <laughs> out. But do you think that's what it is? Do you think like when you play something like, because I honestly, I find that amazing that Resident Evil doesn't scare you. Like, yeah, I honestly makes my shoulders go up and my calves tense and I can barely move. <laughs> but do you think it's because, you know, ultimately it does follow your standard horror template. Do you know what I mean? Like you, you, if you were going to look at it analytically, you could probably go scare here, scare there. Is that what it is? And why System Shock kind of shakes that up, why it gets you? Because honestly, well, did you play PT? Uh, no, I watched it being played many, many times, but I didn't have a PS4. Um, I just got it just after Konami decided to pull it from the store entirely. So it really peed me off because I really wanted to play it. I watched my friend play it. Um, which is the funniest thing I've ever seen. Actually, second funniest thing I've ever seen. First was you lot playing it. <laughs> it was hilarious. I didn't know what it was then either, man. Just for context, <laughs> when I was back on my video game of days, literally Chris Pratt used to work there saying, Miller, you and Dave are going to come in and play this game that Kojima or whatever the story was at the time. I don't remember. I was like, all right. He goes, it's scary. I was like, okay. So I braced myself. I wasn't ready for that. My mm. word was I not ready for it. It was, it was horrendous. Well, but the thing is, even if I had watched it, I would be – that would still get to me. Did you watch it with no problems as well? Because I, I think that's amazing. Because uh, to me, that goes into human psyche and conscious blah, blah, boring, boring. But were you able to watch your mate play it and not care? Uh, no, it was – that did actually – it did make me feel very uneasy. It's, that was a, such a well-made demo. Just that, that noise of the, um, the light moving, just constant. 
and then the radio and then there's a bit where she just grabs you if you stay still for too long uh, that that always made me jump it still makes me jump now even though i know it's coming uh, i watch um, your video game bumps as well we played it and i know it's coming but every time her face pops up you're like oh i don't like that face <laughs> <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> oh man, I tell you that game for people that never played PT. I mean, you you've either got it or you don't now. I don't think there's any other way to play it. But genuinely, and I, I and I've played a lot of them, but a lot of them against my will. Scariest game ever. I mean, by by a the atmosphere that game creates is like you're about to die. Like yeah. it, it's just absolutely horrible. <laughs> Oh dear, I don't get it. I don't get it. But hey, it's dead now, and in a way, I'm glad that it's dead. Um, <laughs> the other, a couple more things I wanted to talk about before we just go off on tangents. Assassin's Creed Three Remastered got announced this week as well. Yeah, I thought everybody hated Assassin's Creed Three and decided <laughs> it was the worst one. I am. Um, I kind of know about it because I got the um, with Odyssey. I got the season pass, and that's part of the season pass, so I knew it was coming. Um, but yeah, I that was. I think I played that on the PS3, um, and it did the, the, the beginning bit in the theatre, and I just stopped after that. You, you stab someone, John Bill's booth or whatever it is, and I just thought, this is shit. and never played it again. I have no idea why they're remaking it. Yeah, well, who wanted it? I don't who know. Who wanted that game? I have no idea. I literally, uh, it's one of the most strange, strange, one of the most strangest things I ever saw. Um, Liberation's coming as well. So the, uh, the Vita one, they're up, upscaling that. I don't think many people wanted that game either, but that's coming with it. I don't. That's, that, I, it, blew, it blew my mind. I'm not an Assassin's Creed guy anyway, but even I know that Assassin's Creed 3 is not the one that you remaster because pretty much everybody hates that game. But hey ho, what, what do you do? What do you do? Uh, I'm going to have a copy of it soon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what? Uh, I want to say what? Let's talk about a random game as well. Again, this really does hark back to the video game of days. Should you, should you care? Basically, there used to be an on an on running joke on Video Gamer about, well, I mean, I mean essentially, <laughs> essentially about Kane and Lynch too. I'm not going to get into specifics, but amazingly, as Chris and I were talking before we started this podcast, you mentioned you bought it for what, 49p. Yep, best 49p I've ever spent. Is it? <laughs> is it the first time you've played it? Yeah, it was uh, the, the first time um, I had to jump through hoops to get the thing to work as well because. Oh yeah. It was- Steam doesn't tell you that oh, it doesn't work on Windows 10, so you have to go and download all these bits and pieces and then take yourself offline as well for it to actually run. Um, but yeah, it's uh, surprisingly good. I tell you, man, I, I, we were saying this. It is... How can I explain it? It's it's it, it gets away with a lot based on its premise and its origi- originality and the things that it tried to come up with. Like, it's really, really, really well thought out from how are we going to a separate this from the original game but also make sure it stands out in its own right and i think it does it wonderfully like i, I really really do I, I i think that it it's not a great video game per se but it certainly is an interesting one again and i think one of the reasons it probably holds up now is because you can get around with that given the way it looks and the way that it's shot because you said it felt like heat yeah, it, 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 I can't remember. Is it Brian De Palma or something like that? I think that's the director. But yeah, the, the way the camera bounces around because it's a person following you as your cane, I think you are. And um, yeah, it just it feels so raw and visceral. And and uh, when you shoot someone in the face, it senses the the bullet holes in their head. <laughs> it's, it's like it's like being in like your own documentary about a complete mad bastard and his friend who's just stuck for the ride yeah no i agree i i I mean again i don't necessarily i don't think it's a good game i don't want anyone to run away thinking it's the the best game ever but i I, now i mean for 39p for people that are interested in games that don't follow the the expected path i think that it's i think it's really good i really really do i think there's something to it and again i like it when developers think outside the box we don't get that a lot anymore no, but yes. you know, and I understand why because I'm, I mean, I'll look it up now quickly. I'm pretty sure Kane and Lynch 2 died on its ass, which is why we never got Kane and Lynch <laughs> 3. 
But still, they, they gave it a go, and I, I absolutely could do more than that. I'm trying to find it now. Am I going to be able to find this? Uh, Kane, I mean, Kane Lynch sold over one million copies worldwide. Like, that's not great. That's not enough to, to justify a sequel, hence, hence we never saw one. But yeah. I appreciated it. Like, I appreciated the effort, for lack of a... I mean, so that means nothing to them. But I... It, it, it's a fact for 39p or 49p, whatever it was, I think it is worth giving it a go. And it must run on any computer now, surely. It's so old. Like, even if you've got a basic modern modern computer it must be all right yeah anything on windows 10 it just won't you have to go as i say through hoops but that's just because it's windows 10 and we could have an entire podcast about windows 10 it's, oh. <laughs> it's just the worst operating system i've ever used in my entire life yeah you see but... this is why i don't play games on pc you see this is the, the sole <laughs> reason because i mean well, i didn't have a pc for a while i, I do now but also, the again, the hoops you have to jump through to do anything using it, I can only imagine how bad it must be when you want to get a video game to work as well. That's crazy. I've got uh, the Dungeon Siege games as well. And for some reason, Dungeon Siege 1 works fine. No problem at all. 3 works fine. 2, not having any of it because there's, there's some hard coding that they did that just won't let it go on anything over Windows 7. So I can't play the game. But again, I've got to go through a billion different hoops to get the game to work and it just can't be bothered it sounds, <laughs> horre- it sounds horrendous it sounds yeah. like it sounds like the exact the exact thing i never want to do because i'll get so <laughs> mad that i can't get it to work and i don't understand i'm like you know what i can't i can't do this i'm out i'm out and i go and do anything literally anything else i can find to do is what yeah. i will go and find to do because i don't like that stuff at all the, the worst thing as well is i got the, to actually load up the front part and then click start and then it didn't work and then it corrupted itself as well it so did. i had to re-download it and do it over it again so it's like no uh, not dealing with you anymore no, I'll just play the third one done um i think i do want to mention because we are only a sort of a week or so away and obviously you know you're a man that's well into your games you play it certainly sounds like you like to keep up to date with you know the, the big games that are coming out what's your interest or if any you may not be interested at all in that kind of ties into my other point in crackdown 3 because i've been doing a lot of reading about it recently i feel like it's really important to microsoft because the xbox one just hasn't had a major exclusive in a while and yet everything i'm reading coming out of the preview session a few weeks ago is like well it's okay but xyz you know abc all all this kind of you know basically people aren't raving about it in the way that i imagine microsoft would have wanted in fact if i can find it quickly there was an article on forbes which, yeah, I mean, literally damning headline. With under two weeks to release, Xbox's Crackdown 3 still looks abysmal. I was like, the whole, come on, tell me what you really think, Forbes. <laughs> I mean, what's your opinion, man, when it comes to Crackdown? Do you care? Do you not care? Um, so it's one of those games that's not really on my radar. Um, so I didn't really like it. Crackdown 2 only sold because it had a an important demo with it. I can't remember, but it was a big game that come with it, and that was the reason why it sold so well. That's so, right. What was that? It was, it was the Halo 3 demo, right? I think, yeah, it was one of the Halos, and that was the only reason why it sold so it was, well. It was, it was the Halo 3 beta, yeah. If you bought Crackdown, you got access to the Halo 3 beta. Good memory, my friend. <laughs> and then, so, you know, they, they seem to have bypassed that, that thought in their head. Now, like, oh, everyone loved Crackdown. So, no, they didn't. <laughs> they just only got that. Same with um, Zoe as well, when they had the Metal Gear 2. That was the only reason people bought that for back in the PS2. Um, and then Zoe got a, a, an update as well. It's, again, everyone's, we don't really care about Zoe, but thanks. You know, we'd rather have you know, Metal Gear again. But yeah, no, Crackdown 3... Yeah, Terry Crews, he can't even save it. Which is weird, right? Because Terry, yeah. Terry Crews can save anything. Terry yeah. Crews is like the nicest man in the world. And if Terry Crews can't say something, you know something's gone awry. Um, but yeah. I, I, just, I'm just, I don't know where the buzz is. I'm intrigued. It comes out soon as well, right? I'm going to get this up. I should have looked a minute ago. Uh, get, get it. I mean, it must be, uh, yeah, I mean, it's this month. Why do you not have a release date? A 15th is literally next week. Oh my gosh. Well, it's going to be interesting. I'll play it. I'll go out and I'll, I'll get a copy. I'm always intrigued. Uh, talking about games throughout the rest of the year as well, because it's always good to get a different perspective. What's sort of really on your radar? I mean, we had somebody ask the other day, like, if you could only play one game for the rest of 2019, what would it be? And I pulled out three straight away. So what are the games that sort of you're really looking forward to? What games do you think people should be aware of? Uh, any sort of under the radar gems? Uh, just any, anything like that, because again, we're still waiting for the year to sort of really take off. 
I think sort of, you know, late February, March is when we'll get the big games. And we'll probably get the summer break and then into all the usual big hitters. But unless something like The Last of Us 2 comes out, I don't really think there's any super duper games on the radar this year. But you may have something else in your mind. Um, yeah, Shadows Die Twice. I, I am waiting for that with bated breath. The uh, From Software game. So Dark Souls, basically, with Ninja Swords. That scares me, though. You said the word <laughs> Dark Souls, and it's made by the Dark Souls guys. That's their next game, isn't it? Yeah, it's, um, what's his face? I can never remember his name, but no, it's him again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, 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 that, that would not go. That I, I, just, I mean, look, Bloodborne, I thought, was, you know, more accessible and, and, a, and a sort of better produced game than, yeah, than the Dark Souls games. But even then, it was just... I, it just come, when it comes down to this thing I was actually talking about yesterday, I did it. I was just live streaming Spider Man just to get that game finished. And I, I, not a lot of people agree with me, and it's cool, but I really have got to the point in my life now where I don't want a challenge in games. When I play games, I want it to be really, really simple. I want it to be an experience first and foremost. And even if I walk through it without ever dying, I'm cool with that. And again, I get it. People still want that. Look, the, the proof is in the pudding. The game you just brought up is a game that quintessentially is going to be that. But I just sometimes would prefer if there is an easy, and I'm not saying there has to be an easy mode in game games, not at all. But if there is an easy mode, I still don't really feel like it's easy mode. Like I want to walk through that game. That's what I want. I want like to have to be shot 400 times before I even <laughs> lose a little bit of life. And I'm not saying that we should not give the the alternative. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying if you include an easy mode, please treat me like a child and I'll be quite happy. But just give me a good story, a good experience, and you've won me over and good visuals and presentation because I'm a sucker for that because I'm an idiot. <laughs> yeah, I, I quite like, you know, the, the indie games tend to do that. Um, they'll either be, well, actually, they'll either be stupidly hard or, or they'll be um, an experience, you know, like a, I can't think of a game off the top of my head now. Um, Oxen Free, things like that, you know, where it was, you could die in that game, but you know there was a whole big story and there was lots to read and lots to listen to. Uh, but, you know, you, you could just coast through it. You know, it was, as long as you, you thought laterally and didn't do anything stupid, um, then you wouldn't die. And Yeah, I, I quite like that as well. Doom, again, go back to that again. Doom, you can put that on very easy and just smack the shit out of everybody and it's, it's so much fun you know, just run up to everyone just punching their faces off or if you want you know they've got uh, their, their 90s mode where it gets as hard as the games we used to play when we we were younger no i i, I don't i just i just i don't know i don't know what it was i just I, I think doom is a great example of that maybe that's why i love doom so much because you could just fly through the game and it always felt satisfying at the same time so i'm getting that experience that i want where it feels good to play but i don't ever feel like my back's against the wall and that's what i don't want i mean that that's that really is what i'm done with it's actually one of the plus points i think of red dead redemption 2 red dead 2 has such downtime that you can actually just enjoy the pacing of it and not worry about dying did you play red dead not yet no i'm a, um, i mean treat to see what you think about it because i've got kind of a good idea of what you like but that game is just so weird in terms of what you'd expect a massive video game to be. And obviously this week it was announced it's shipped over 23 million copies. Which yeah, is, it has done, I mean, done insane numbers. I mean, it's ridiculous. And, and again, so, you know, anyone that's expecting anything new from Rockstar, I think again, we're getting Grand Theft Auto and uh, Red Dead for quite some time. Which I've got, I've got no problem with, by the way. I just know a lot of people say, oh, they should do this, they should do that. They don't need to. They don't no. need to at all. Like, these two games by themselves are holding the fort. You know, but what else even comes close? I mean, Call of Duty used to, but not anymore. Rockstar is so far ahead of the game, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's them and uh, Naughty Dog. They just make games that you know, just sell gangbusters. I'm looking forward to um, Last of Us 2. Um, that just looks amazing. I liked The Last of Us as well. That was, was an experience and a half. But it was so hard. <laughs> yeah, it was. Ridiculous. What do you want them to do with Last of Us 2? Because... I love the first one, but I think it's such a complete experience. I mean, just from a, you know, my brain doesn't work this way. I don't know how you make the second one, not necessarily tie in, but kind of bleed out from that. I mean, obviously in this one, you're going to be controlling Ellie and there's going to be a focus on other characters. But you, you just said yourself, like it had a real impact on you. So what do you want them to do with another one, basically? Like, where do you want them to take it? What do you want to see? Like, and also, like, you know, say you're 20 hours into the game. Where does it end? Like, what, what's the end game of it? Oh, that's a good question. I'm more of the same, definitely, but 
make it the combat a little bit less fiddly. Yeah. Um, that, that did seem like it was uh, like an afterthought. But then it's the same with um, I can't remember what it's called Uncharted as well. The combat in that way has felt a bit iffy. It was more about the, you know the jumping around and doing all that sort of stuff, and then combat was just in the way of the game. Um, but yeah, if they can make the combat a little bit more fluid, or you know, at least go in one direction. You know, sort of. If if you want us just to be stealthy, then let us you know do that, but do that well, rather than you know it be it was a, a janky mess. The amount of times it, sometimes you could walk around the clicker and they would notice you. Other times you do the same thing and the, the clicker would go, "Oh no, I've seen you this time," and then just eats your face. You know, it needs to be. Just, just be better. It was all it was amazing as it was. If they can do that and then go up like three steps, then you know, PlayStation owners are going to have yet another game that they can chuck in the face of an Xbox owner. I forgot about the clickers. Sorry, I was away with the fair. I remember that one. <laughs> I remember that one level where you're. I mean, and this doesn't help anything because you're in this kind of environment all the time, but. You're in some basement or you're below, and oh my gosh, trying to get out of there. I just had to run eventually. I just had to leg it out of there. I was like, I cannot kill all this stuff. <laughs> I, mean, what, that, I mean, that was the, and that was the, in terms of a game, if you want to talk about mechanics, yeah, it certainly was not the best. But everything, but you, I let it slide because everything else was just the best. That, that was the best. Like, the, the core wasn't the best, but the story, the characters, and the really good thing about that, and this is why I like video games, which is why I really gravitated towards this. Is Joel especially? Joel was just a real person, you know. It, even though you were in control of him, he would never do anything that Joel, the character, wouldn't do. Like you could never actually veer him away from that. And I thought that was so clever in a game where he's not actually in control of his own actions. But they put it together so well that yeah, I just love it. I love that game. I think it's. I think, and also sometimes like the bit when he steals Ellie at the end. I know loads of people that are like I don't want him to take Ellie, but it's like tough shit. You're only in control of Joel. You're not making up his his reasons for not or doing something. Yeah, yeah, and it's it, Joel's established at the beginning as he is an asshole. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and you're you pretty much play him as an asshole as well because you're randomly murdering people. So oh, these two guys are in the way. We could just walk around them, but Joel would never do that. So I don't like his face. So go and kill that guy. Um, yeah, Ellie was the more the, the the calming influence. You know, she was she made him because he lost his child and all those spoilers. Um, <laughs> they've, yeah, had so, time, yeah. they've had time, man. They've had time. They've had time. Yeah, and she, he sort of bonded to her, which is, you know, he was never going to let her go, ever. There was no way, you know, from the, the beginning, it's like, no, she's not going to end up and, you know, having her brain taken out. He ain't going to let that happen. And towards the end of the game, you're like, no, I knew Joel would nick her. Oh, sorry, say again, man, you cut out. Uh, sorry, yeah, so at the very end of the game, you know, Joel said, um, it was like, Joel, we always knew he was going to take um, Ellie. We always knew he was going to do that from the very beginning when he first met her. And, you know, it was, oh, you need to escort her to this place because she's she's the cure. You know, just knew he, he never let her go. Yeah, and that's why I liked it, right? That was his, he couldn't let her go. He couldn't, that was his, that was the way he got through all the hell that they were experiencing was her. And, it, oh, man, what a, what a video game. The best thing about it, too, is I, I've said this, told this story a thousand times. I thought it was going to be shite. I played that demo mm. and I was like, this game is rubbish. And then you just realise it's out of context and a really bad demo. And actually, it's really, really good. I played that on a bank holiday Monday. I remember I played it over the weekend on a bank holiday Monday. And I walked into video game on Tuesday. I'm like, guys, that game is amazing. And they were like, what are you talking about? I said, honestly, dudes, it is absolutely phenomenal. They didn't believe me. They thought I was just like pulling their leg or winding them up. I gave it a 10 out of 10. They're like, Miller, what are you doing? I said, trust me, man. That's a masterpiece. I promise you. And everyone said the same. I was like, yeah, that's right. That's right. But it does divide people. A lot of people, not everyone agrees. A lot of people kind of thinks that um, it's overrated, which is cool. I get it. You know, each to their own. But I don't. I think it's, uh, yeah, I think, it's, I think it's, it's just brilliant. It's just a brilliant video game. Yeah, it's definitely one of the games of, of our generation. Definitely. It, it's, it's up there. People get excited about Devil May Cry 5 as well, talking about games that are about to come out. I mean, I, I, I read a bunch of previews today, just because when I'm eating my lunch or whatever, I go clicking around. And yeah, everybody's saying that, I just, I don't know, man. Devil May Cry to me is, it's from a different time. And I wasn't into it then, so it's difficult for me to work out why I'd be into it now. 
I like um, the last one they did, uh, mainly because of the soundtrack. It was noisier, um, b- b- banging drum and bass going on, and the, the sense of humour, and just batting everything up in the air. But it's just God of War, um, just with a different character. I think Devil May Cry come before God of War, I'm not sure. I don't know who copied who, but it, you know, the whole swinging your sword around, different weaponry combinations, the only difference was the guns. I prefer God of War. God of War to me feels... Well, I mean, I haven't played Devil May Cry game in a long time, so I saw people will, will correct me. But God of War feels to me just a bit more weighty and a bit more... Like, with Devil May Cry, I feel like you have to sort of pull out combos and, you know, mix weapons together and do all of this. Which, again, I understand I, I, that you can do that in God of War too, but it never felt like a necessity. I always feel like I'm fighting, you know... Uh, yeah, I always feel like I'm fighting a battle when I play those games. Like, I'm always, I'm just not good enough to get away with it. Yeah, Kratos, you never felt um, underpowered with him. It's just, he just beat the crap out of everything. Whereas Dante, it just felt like so much effort. It, um, all the creatures had the blue ones and the red ones. He's like, oh, I have to hit that with the red. And then he turns blue, then I have to hit it with the blue attack. And then he goes red again. And you have to do it all in order. So you have to remember these huge, massive combinations just to kill that one creature. And then the game would bring that quick, that seven versions of that creature up at once. It's like, right, do it again, but seven times. All <laughs> yeah, in the way. You oh. do. You <laughs> do have to do that and then change weapon four times in the air. I'm like, I can't. I can't do it. I'm not skilled enough to do this. Yeah, it's like a, it's a very well-hidden bullet hell game. That's all that is. So just do the oh, uh, dance, dance, revolution, just with a sword. Yeah, I, I, I can't do it. I can't do it. It's not it's not in my wheelhouse. But I know lo- I mean, loads of people are excited about it. Like, those previews came out. Everyone has pretty much said it's awesome. People are going to love it. Capcom, obviously, I think the, the, the quarter revenue they just posted is their most successful ever. So, you know, I mean, think about the amount of games that they have released and they've just posted their most successful ever... Well, it's something like that. Let me see if I can find it. I, mean, I was really surprised because, you know, obviously Capcom's been going for a long time. Iconic games from here to there. And, I mean, I can't find it. There we go. Yeah, Capcom reaches record profits. And all thank- this was literally a couple of days ago. And they put the, um, you know, the major reason for that because of Monster Hunter World. I mean, yeah. yeah. That- that's, a, that's a weird old game, that is. It's good, but it's not. <laughs> it's a very strange game. So I'm still walking around just doing everyone's got really big childbearing hips, even the men. You, <laughs> you all look really weird. Why is a cat following me everywhere? <laughs> it's just oh but I, I enjoyed it at the same time. And the controls are janky as fuck as well. It's, I'm so used to using the shoulder buttons to fight things, so it's like just tap X over and over and over again to smash the crap out of something. Yeah. But yeah, it, it there's a lot of fun to it. It's very bright and colourful, and the, some of the creatures are just ridiculously like Shadow of the Colossus, big. And you you have to fight them, and you got you've um, billions of Koreans to play with, which is loads of fun. It's, they they are just on another level. These people <laughs> amazing at games. You get in a group with like two or three Koreans, just just sit back, have a sandwich, just watch them. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. It is true, though. I mean, it's done well. Like, it's sold over, it's shipped over 11 million copies, uh, Monster Hunter World, that is, which is absolutely, absolutely ridiculous. And um, obviously, they had Mega Man 11, which also did well. Uh, I mean, the surprise for me is, you know, Resident Evil 2 Remake, which only came out on January 25th, has already shipped 3 million. That was its first week. Did you you get around to play? Did you play Resident Evil the remake? No, that's a bone of contention. It's funny, actually, because. Review of your car. Basically, my girlfriend um, needed the money to fix hers, so it was like, do I buy Resident Evil 2, or do I get to sleep in the same bed as my girlfriend? Mm. <laughs> I'm guessing you didn't choose Resident no. Evil 2. <laughs> it was very close. <laughs> well, it would probably come down in price eventually, man. You you can get it there. Yeah, I'm just going to get it next month when I get paid again, so yeah, I'm just going to be a month behind everyone else, but... Yeah, I've avoided watching it, and, and I know the game anyway because I Resident Evil Two. I was on that the moment it came out on the PlayStation, and loved that game. Absolutely loved it. Probably the best survival horror game ever made. Yeah. Oh well, you'll you'll absolutely love this one then, man. Because like I say, I, I didn't really even play the original one, and even I can see how well they've managed to bring. We've talked about this in this podcast before, but it is genuinely incredible how the time, the effort, and the money they put into this to ensure that it makes sense in 2019. 
and everyone involved just deserves all the credit in the world for doing it. Like genuinely brilliant, genuinely brilliant, really, really, really good. Yeah, I've seen a lot of videos of Mr. X where people have done it. So every time you burst through a door, you know, DMX is X going to give it to you? <laughs> yeah, of I course they have. want that in the game. <laughs> that's just amazing. That's and the, it's, sorry, go on. Like, that's the best thing about Capcom is they probably do it. Like, they do have a good sense of humour. Like they, There's always something weird in their games. Yeah, I'd love if they did that. That would be. I know that the PC version, somebody's modded it so it goes into first person. So it's oh, yeah, like this Evil yeah. 7. Yeah, screw that. Some, <laughs> somebody's also put in the the old fixed camera angles as well so you, yeah, you I can play with them. I, mean, I would never want to go back to that i mean i remember play, trying to play silent hill hd collection oh my days like when you try and play any game like that it's just even walking out a door was hard like it's so hard to control because we have come so far we're not using d-pads anymore so the last thing i want to do is go back to uh fixed fixed camera angles on resident evil i think it would it would ruin my brain yeah, they, they they were of their time. They don't work now. No, they don't. But they, with, again, which is why I'm a big fan of Resident Evil 2, because they've kind of negated that so well. I, I'm going to keep going on about it, but I was just so impressed. I didn't think it would be as good as it turned out to be. Like, it, 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 easily right now the best game that I've, uh, that I've played this year. But obviously, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a relatively young year. We don't, know, mm. we don't know what else is going to come out. I mean, I don't even think... I, I still think there's probably big games out there that are yet to even, you know, to be yet to even drop for 2019, which could change everything. I mean, I, I, to be, we have had Kingdom Hearts 3 as well, but that's so far off my radar, I don't even know what to say about it. Like, yeah, I, I, it's, it's, I looked at it and went, cool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, good. I'm glad it came out. Yeah, next week's awesome, though. I mean, next week you get Far Cry New Dawn, Jump Force, which I know a lot of people are excited about because it's like, you know, Super Smash Brothers for, for that market. Metro and Metro Exodus and Crackdown 3. And then the week after that, you get Anthem. I mean, that is a pretty a packed couple of weeks. And then you get into, to, not just to do release dates, but when you get into March, you get Total War 3 Kingdoms, which I know loads of people are pumped for. Devil May Cry 5, obviously Division 2 that we've talked about. The whole Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. I mean, yeah, yeah. it really, 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 really does pick up. And in April, for me, I get Mortal Kombat 11. Everything's going to be all right with the world. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to, to that. I can't even speak English, so I'm looking forward to that so much. What? C- cables in it. I was going to say, that's who they announced, isn't it? They announced him yeah. this week. That, that was it for me. Is that like, cables in? I'm in. When was... Love cable. And I think um, Cabal and Devorah are back as well. I'm yeah. Just d- double checking to make... Yeah, that is right. Yeah, they're real with them the other day. So they're really going... Like I don't, Cabal has not been in a in a video game since 2011 or in Mortal Kombat game since 2011. Yeah, and, sorely missed. Yeah, so I, I honestly, man, I think they're going all out when it comes to fans, and that really is how that uh, series has, has lasted all this time is because of the fans. And it just seems like Ed Boon completely gets it. I'm really pumped, and I played it a little bit. I think it's great. Yeah, I just I, it is what it is. You already know what it is before you've played it. But trust me, I think it's, I love those games. I love them. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Mortal Kombat. Like, I've got X um, installed on my PlayStation at the minute because they announced uh, 11. It's like, I've got to go back and play that again, I think. Yeah, dude, I tell you, man, that the whole we're going to put a single player story in the in the, in the the sort of the adventure mode, whatever you want. It was so good. So good. Oh, man. 10 out of 10. Love that game. Uh, right, dude, is there anything else you want to talk about before we start wrapping up? Uh, no, I think. Oh, I've got. Uh, podcast um, coming out soon with my friend Stuart Lyons. Um, nice, now, What's it called? Now that's what I call gaming. <laughs> <laughs> the best thing about that is, I, did that does that album transcend across shores? Do they have that in America? I hope not, because it makes it funnier. <laughs> that's a good name, dude. That's a good name. That's a good name. When does it go live, man? Uh, hopefully in a couple of weeks. Um, we recorded it in the beginning of January, but. I, I had two laptops and they both died well, that sounds um, fun. <laughs> during during the recording process. Um, yeah, so I've got it on a hard drive that I had to pull out of the old laptop um, and then buy some stuff to actually run that hard drive. So it's behind this laptop at the minute. Um, then I've got to do all the um, producery stuff as well. So, yeah, give myself a bit of time to fix that. So a couple of weeks, we hope, and all then right. we'll start recording properly as well. And, my usual website as well, SoundCloud, um, Infamous UK, there's loads of music on there. Um, and my YouTube channel as well, where I play games really badly and swear a lot. <laughs> everyone, uh, man, everyone does yeah. that. <laughs> um, yeah. 
Cool. Just there you go. It. So that's what I call gaming podcast. Look out for it. Infamous UK on SoundCloud on YouTube as well. Uh, on YouTube as well. On yeah. YouTube as well. You can go check it out and you can go see a man swear about games, which we all love. Uh, dude, thank you very much for your time. It's always nice talking to you. Hey, it's been a pleasure. And again, you can get me on Twitter, Instagram, Simon316, YouTube.com, Forces the Middle Report Rules, and supported by Patreon.com, Forces Simon Miller316. Thank you as always for listening. Thank you for tuning in. And we will be back next week. But more importantly, enjoy your weekends, enjoy whatever you're doing, and I'll talk to you again soon. Yeah.